Hello everyone, welcome back to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're gonna to be looking at a viewer question about using a particular STM32 part number that comes in a fine pitch BGA package. So for those of you that are familiar with the STM32 part family, you know that they come in a variety of packages, including fine pitch BGAs. We're gonna look at one of those packages in this video, and we're gonna show how to fan out that BGA using just through hole layers or just HDI layers. Jump into Altium Designer and follow along. Let's get started. Before we get started, let's take a look at that viewer question. Kadem Al Abdul Musin writes, I think it would be interesting for viewers to briefly examine the manufacturer's claim that this IC can be broken out in four HDI layers or six through-hole layers for both packages. The part number that he's referring to in this question is an STM32 microcontroller with 0.8 millimeter pitch, as well as the 0.5 millimeter pitch version. Now I've used STM32 microcontrollers in the 0.8 millimeter pitch package that he's referring to. Now I haven't worked with that particular part number. So we're gonna take a look at that part number in Altium Designer. But first, let's jump onto the board and see how we can predict how many layers we're gonna need, both for through-hole layers as well as HDI layers. To predict how many signal layers we will need to fully fan out that particular part number, first we need to know the row or column count, and then we need to determine if we're gonna use through-hole or blind vias. First, let's take a look at the through-hole case. This particular component has 17 rows slash columns, it is in a square package, so the number of rows, of course, equals the number of columns. So that means vertically, if we just count up the number of balls, we would count 17 rows of balls. Now, if we draw out the balls underneath the package, this is our first uh, set of balls, and this is our second row of balls, we would have a 0.8 millimeter pitch between each row and between each column. The size of these balls is about 13 mil, and this is actually the size of the pad, not the size of the solder ball. But with a 13 mil pad size, and then a 0.8 or 31.5 mil pitch between balls, that leaves 31.5 minus 13, or about 18.5 mil between each of these. So that's just enough room to do a dog bone fan out with vias on these inner rows. And you wouldn't actually start that on row two, you would actually want to start that here on row three. So the first place we're going to start with a dog bone fan out using through holes is on row three, and we can just fan it out like this. So this will be our first via. So when we're planning out our routes, what we can do is immediately just use the two outer rows as is and route right in between these balls. So here we can route directly out of the package. On the next row, we can route over and up. And we need to make sure that the trace is sized appropriately so that we can fit it in between the two pads without violating any of our manufacturing clearances. So that's typically gonna require something like a five mil or maybe a four mil trace for this package. So for this 0.8 millimeter pitch package, we would then have two available places to then route traces out of this particular package. So we can go with two for one signal layer, and then we can go with two coming out from the next signal layer. And with the reason we can get two out of this next signal layer is because if I draw out these vias like this in a dog bone pattern, you'll be able to then route from here and then underneath this set of pads on the top layer, on the next layer. So here we have one layer, and then we have two layers. So this first four rows can be routed on two signal layers. Once we get down further in to the next set of balls, so for the next one, two, three, four rows, each one of these rows is gonna require its own dedicated signal layer in order to do the escape routing. So that's really important because it's this fact that lets us count up the total number of signal layers that are going to be needed to fully fan out this package with a total of 17 rows and columns. We need one, two, three, four, five, six, if we're going to be using through hole vias. So this gives us a total of six layers with through hole vias. Now, what if I'm using blind and buried vias? 
Well, when I'm using blind and buried vias, as I start to get inside of the stack up, I don't have to just route between these vias. I can actually route underneath them. So I can do blind and buried either as a dog bone fan out or as via in pad. And if I do that, I can just continue to route underneath all of these successive vias. That means for each layer, I could route two of these groups of signals for each signal layer. So here on the top half of the BGA, I have eight rows of signals, and that means two of these rows per signal layer. And if I have eight rows with two rows per signal layer, that gives me a total of four layers with blind and buried vias or with an HDI approach. So this is how they get to those numbers. Now notice I've only been talking about the top eight rows in this 17 row package. So that would basically be the top half of the package. So if you take the top eight rows and the bottom eight rows, that only gives you 16 rows that have been fanned out. What about that 17th row? What happens to that? Well, typically that row is gonna be able to just connect to power or ground somewhere in the stack up. And there's gonna be enough extra balls on this package that need to just connect to power or ground that they essentially don't get involved in any of this fan out routing. So we can essentially ignore that row. So let's take a look at this package in Ultium Designer and we'll get to actually see what this looks like with a dog bone fan out using through holes and we'll be able to count up how many layers we actually need. Now I'm inside Altium Designer. As you can see here, I have the STM32 footprint for the 0.8 millimeter package. What we're gonna do in this example is look at how to do this with through holes. And I think once we see how to do this with through holes, it's gonna be pretty easy to see how to do it with blind and varied vias. First, I need to set up some rules for my routing. Inside of the uh, PCB rules and constraints editor, if you just look at the width rule, I've set a preferred width of five mils. That way when I use the fan out tool, it's going to apply five mil traces to that fan out. I could also create a room for that BGA and then apply a width just to that room and set the fan out width that I like. And then it will only apply traces with that width in the room. I've also set up my vias here um, because of course, when I do the fan out, it's then going to place some vias so we can hit those inner layers. Here, my preferred via drill diameter is 10 mils. And then I have a pad diameter of 18 mils. When you go to the 0.5 millimeter package, you're probably gonna end up using smaller vias and via in pad in order to do through hole routing, or you can just go blind and buried and you can then go smaller. Of course, uh, then you may need to go to laser drilling for your fabrication if you go too small. So just keep that in mind. But for this particular case, we're gonna stick with these via sizes and trace sizes to do dog bone fan out for this component. Now, the last thing that we need to do before applying the fan out to this is we need to set up our layer stack. So currently I have the layer stack set up with a total of six layers. I'm just gonna add two layers. That's gonna represent our extra signal layers that we're gonna need so that we can fully fan this out using through hole vias. Once I hit save and go back to the PCB, I'm ready to do the fan out. Once I jump back into the PCB, I can just select the component and then I can go up to route and then fan out and then select components. After I hit okay, You'll see the dog bone fan out fill in here. You can see all of the traces that I need to route through the top layer are automatically placed. And then we have through holes that we can access in the interior layers so that we can do our internal layer routing. Now, obviously just looking at this, we don't need to do any more fan out work on the top layer because we have all of these traces accessible around the edge of the package. So let's just jump to the next signal layer. So here on this layer, we want to then try and route straight out from these vias where we land on this layer. And then we would want to route from the next row in between these vias. Now, what do we need to do to make sure we can route between these vias? Well, here, if I have my trace width set to my preferred value, which is five mil, you'll notice here that I can't route between these vias. Five mil trace width with a five mil clearance is just slightly too much clearance in order to route between those vias. However, if we set this clearance to four mils and then we use a four mil trace, let's just see if we can actually do that routing in between these vias. So if I set this to four mils, you see that indeed we actually can get a trace in between those two vias. And so now we've allowed ourselves to route two rows of connections on a single layer, just like we were talking about on the board. What happens when we go 
to the next layer. Well, if we go to the next layer, now we're blocked around this edge, and this next layer routing would start right here, and I would need to start to route out just like this. Now, you'll notice I could use a five mil trace or a four mil trace. It's a good idea to go with a four mil trace just to get a little bit of extra clearance. And then if we go to the next layer, we would do the same kind of thing. We would just select this one, and then we start to route out, Go ahead and use a four mil trace. This continues all the way through the rest of this stack up. So here we had one layer, two layers, and then three, four, and then two more, five and six, that we're gonna need to route all of the signals out of this package. So that's how we get to the six through hole layers to do this routing. Now you can see here that we have a lot of room on this interior layer here in the interior area where we have this space right in the center of the package. So any leftover traces that are on the very inside of this package can be routed in this region because you got a lot of space here. So with this being an advanced component that has a 0.8 millimeter pitch, you do need to get more aggressive with your trace sizes and your clearances. That's the only way you're gonna be able to route between these vias and then get all of that escape routing out in only six layers with through holes. So in this case, we've already looked at through hole vias being used to access the internal layers. What about blind and buried vias? Well, of course, to do that, we would have to go into our stack up, go over to the via types tab, and then from here, we can start to add in our blind and buried vias. Now, of course, we would wanna then set this up to then have our correct layer spans, we're gonna be doing multiples of these across multiple layers, as you can tell here how I'm setting them up. And then we would need to go through and place these in the BGA footprint in order to then access these internal layers. So I'm not gonna go through and redo this same exercise again for blind and buried vias, but instead let's just analyze the pattern and see exactly how you can get this down to four layers using blind and buried vias. First, on the top layer, we would have the exact same pattern that we have right now. We would be able to route the first two rows directly out of the package on that top layer. Again, as long as we use these uh, small enough traces and small enough clearances. Then when we go to the next layer, we would also be able to do this type of routing where we're routing straight out from this first row and then we're routing between the vias in the second row. So that gives us two signal layers for four of our rows. What about on layer four? Well, here we would also have these two sets of vias totally gone. They wouldn't reach layer four because they terminate on the previous layer. So we can then do this type of routing, but we can do that here on layer four. So now we're able to get two rows into a single layer again. And then once we go to layer five, instead of having this trace here, we would instead start right here and route straight out. We would be routing under all of the vias on the upper layers. And then we would have another route starting here and going up. And then the last set of traces, we could start right here and come up. And then we have another set here that could start right here and come up. So as you can see, it, we're able to then consolidate this down to four signal layers because with the blind and buried vias, we're able to route two rows per signal layer. Thanks for sending in that great question. I'm always happy to show how to use some of these parts. And if anyone out there is watching and has used one of these STM32 packages in a project and you wanna share it publicly, send it over to me on LinkedIn. I'll be happy to highlight the project on our one minute design review series. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. Keep leaving these awesome comments and questions in the comments section. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.